So in this demo, we are going to look at the, one of the timers within LPC 2378. Actually, there are four timers, and the timers support different modes. So in this video, we are going to look at a free running mode of the timer. So this mode is very useful, uh, especially under conditions uh, within your program, you want to uh, measure some timing information. So the easiest way to understand this is you have some code or you have a function and you want to measure like how much time your function is taking to execute. Okay, so in free running mode, uh, what happens is you enable the timer and the timer will be running and it will keep on running until you disable it. Okay, so what you can do is uh, if you have a function for which you want to measure the time, you can read the current value of the time initially, let the function run and the fun function is over. You read the new value in the timer, you find the difference between them, you will find like how many clock cycles it took to run the function and you multiply with the period of the clock. That will give you the exact uh, time taken by your function. Okay, so that's what we are going to follow. Now, okay, so these are the steps uh, broadly we are going to do. So we will choose whether you want a timer or counter. Uh, since in this case, in free running mode, we are planning to measure the timing of a function. Uh, we'll be choosing it as a timer. That means we'll be using one of the internal clocks. Then we'll start the counter or timer. Uh, that means here we'll be starting the timer. Uh, maybe we'll reset it also so that it starts from zero and whenever we want to measure the value we have to read from the tc register the timer counter register so this we will be doing at the beginning of my function and after i have finished my function in both cases after that okay once i am uh, done with my timer i'll be resetting it back to zero and stopping it so these are the important registers uh, which are required for this so if you are using any timer other than timer 0 and 1, you will have to explicitly enable it in the p -con p register. Uh, let me do it for timer 0. So I am skipping this step. If you are using 2 or 3, uh, you have to do it. Next one, you have to choose the source clock. Since we are using it as a timer, we will be using one of the internal clocks, p clocks, peripheral clocks. And you can choose its frequency by programming to peripheral clock select register, PCLK register. By default, it will be core clock by 4, the processor core clock by 4. Uh, if you are happy with that, you don't have to do anything here. Otherwise, we can modify. Again, uh, at the beginning, let's keep it as such. We don't want to change it, so we can skip that also. Here, you configure whether you want to run it as a timer or a counter. In the count control register, we need a timer, so we need to keep these two bits as 0. Forget about these two for the time being. And by default, they are 0. Okay, so if you just want it as a timer, again, you can skip this step also. And finally, if you want to further scale the clock, we can configure the pre-scale register. Okay, so the uh, P clock can be further scaled down using this configuration register. Again, if you want to do this, you can do it. If not, you can skip this also. Okay, that means the pre-scaler register value will be zero. So we'll be scaling with one. That means uh, the counter or timer will be running at uh, CCLK4 itself with the default setting. And finally, uh, you have to set this bit, timer enable bit in this register for enabling the timer, for starting the timer. If you want to reset, you can make this bit high. Now in the data sheet, although it is not explicitly told, if you want to reset the timer, when you set this TR bit, DE bit should be also high. Okay. So you need to keep the timer enabled then you make this uh, reset signal high. On the next P clock, it will be reset uh, synchronously. That means its value will become zero and it will remain zero as long as this bit is high. So if you want to rerun it, uh, just clear this bit, but keep this bit high and the timer will be starting again. So basically, if you don't want to change any default configuration, clock source and the clock frequency, you can skip step one, two, three, and four. And only interesting one is setting the TCR register, timer control register. Okay, so as a starting point, we'll be just configuring that register and let's see how it works. Mm -hmm. So I need a sample function whose uh, execution time I'm going to measure. We'll just write a, a dummy function. Okay, so let's say like I have a delay function inside that. Let me just write some for loop. I will see why less than plus plus. 
So in, in the actual case, this will be your actual function, okay? Whatever code you have, okay? This is C, so we need to do it first. Okay, so I want to measure this guy's time. So let's do it step by step. So as I mentioned, first step is we will enable this one. I'm going to use timer zero. So in peak one P, I'm not going to do anything because by default, this timer is enabled there. So I will reset it so that uh, I start from a known value of time. Okay. Maybe the previous uh, program or someone who has already enabled the timer, so it will have some value already, but I want to start from a known value, so better uh, we reset it. Okay. In the worst case that may happen is the already the timer is running, it has a huge value already, and the timer can overflow. That means the maximum value for this timer is 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. So he can offer and become zero. In that case, if you make the measurement, uh, if you find the difference between the timer value at the end of your function and the beginning of the function, uh, that won't make sense. You might get an 18 number also. Okay. So we don't want that to happen. So we reset it so that the timer starts from zero. For that, we are going to write to our TCR register. I'm using timer zero. So here, if I search for T0, okay, this is for timer 0, TCR. Same way you can see for timer 1, timer 2, timer 3, all are declared. So I will make its value as, okay, as 0x3. Because I want to reset it, at that time I want to keep this enable high. Okay, after that, I can remove the reset and start the timer. So I can just write to one. That means that reset bit I removed and I just enable the timer. Now the timer will start. So I will call my function. Okay, so the timer is running in parallel while my processor is running this code. Once I'm done with that, okay, I will reset the timer again, in this case, and maybe I will disable the timer also. So in this particular case, uh, I, I will just show you in the simulator whether the timer value is changing or not. Uh, how to use that value, we will see later. It should be declared. Okay, all looks fine. Let's compile. And okay, this guy, if you are not passing any argument, he requires a void here. Otherwise, it's okay. Extra line. Okay, so let's go debug start stop. Okay. And this time we are interested in the timer. So let's go to peripheral and let's choose timer. And we are interested in timer zero now. Okay, so you can see all the internal registers of uh, timer zero here. This is the actual timer counter register where the value is going to be incremented. And we have our control register, interrupt register, prescale register, all of them here. Okay, so maybe we can try step by step and see what is really going to happen. Okay. So yeah, you can see as soon as that code is run, the reset and enable bits are checked. Okay. And that means the timer is enabled and reset has been applied, but he's already zero in this case. Okay. Now we are going to the function which I wanted to run. And he skips the for loop entirely, but you can see the value in timer counter, it became 4E5. That means it took these many clock cycles for running uh, this function, basically this loop. Now we came back here. So if you really want to find how much time this guy took, you can directly read from this TC register now. It will give you 4E5. And if you subtract the initial value of timer, which is of course zero, uh, you will get the number of clock cycles taken by this function, which will be for E5, okay? And after that, uh, we are done. We have set up the reset again, we disabled the timer, so everything became zero again, okay? So this is how basically it works. Now uh, let's improve our code and try to find the delay of this function and try to display it uh, through the LEDs connected to one of the ports, okay? Because the TC register is inside the processor, there is no way you can uh, physically see it when you actually do it on the hardware. So the time of execution, you have to display it either using an LCD uh, or some LED, or if you have connected your processor board to your PC through some UART interface, you can send that information through UART interface and display it on the screen, whatever you want.
Okay. So in this case, uh, my assumption is we have some LEDs on port zero. So I am going to display this execution time, the value that I measured for this particular function using that LED. Okay, so what we'll do is again, since we might want to reuse this code again and again, let's write it in a better way uh, because here also we encourage code reuse. So instead of hard coding these uh, register configuration here, we may write them as different kind of functions. For example, I can have a function called, okay, uh, void start timer. What this function do? It should start the timer. Okay, so what I can do in, inside this function, So what this function does is it will start the timer. Uh, so if the timer is already in reset condition, he will bring it out of reset condition and he will just set this bit one. So the timer is enabled and he starts running. That's what we are trying to do in this one. Okay, so what you can do is I want to change only those lower uh, two bits. Okay, so FF, 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 FD, F, the lower two bits I cleared and I want to make the lowermost bit one. Okay, so we are done with that. Same way we can have a function to stop also. So void uh, stop timer. There what we need, we just want to stop. We don't want to touch the reset in this case. Okay. I just want to stop it. So lowermost bit, I want to make uh, this one zero. If it is already in reset, let it be in reset. If there is no reset, let it be no reset. So we'll just add it with E so that the lowermost bit becomes uh, zero. Okay, now maybe we can have a function. I should make this stop timer. Now we can have a function which will read the current value from the timer and return it. So let's say int, okay, get timer value, and we can just return the TC register, timer counter register. So this is the TC register for T0. This has the current timer value. Okay, so let's take it and just say return this one. And we can have a function to reset the timer, uh, separate one. So we can say like void reset timer. So I want to make this bit one. So when I'm resetting, I need to enable this guy also. Okay, so we'll make both of them uh, high in this case. So we can simply say t0 tcr is its current value. I'm just ordering it with uh, three to make both lower bits high. Okay, now we can rewrite the same thing. Uh, now the code looks better also. So I can, uh, I can say like, okay, initially, I want to reset the timer, so I can simply call the function reset timer. Then I want to start the timer. And just before calling the function whose okay, delay I want to measure, I will read the current value from the timer. Ideally, it should be zero, okay, but it may have some uh, small number uh, because by the time you call the function to read it, the timer might have started. So it may have some small number, two or three, depends. So let me call that time, uh, start time. Okay, so let's read it from the timer. Okay, get timer value. So that will give me the start time. Okay, we'll declare uh, start time here. There is a timer we need to declare. Okay, and once I have finished with it, okay, I will get the current value in the timer. Okay, so let's have end time. Let's say like end time equal to, okay, get this one again. And from that, I can get the execution time. Remember, this is not the time. This is actually the number of clock cycles that this function took, the delay function. So end time minus uh, start time, I'll do. Now I want to display it somewhere. I'm going to use our port zero to display it, assuming it has some LEDs connected there. Okay, so I need to first configure it as output, IODA zero. If you wish this also, you can write it as a function. 
So output, and I will say like IO pin zero is uh, this execution type that I mentioned. So it's IO pin. Okay. Now after this, yeah, ideally maybe we can keep our processor in an infinite loop so that it doesn't go out of our code. And uh, I guess everything looks fine. Let's compile it and let's try to run again. Okay, our well, timer is there. Then uh, I wish to see the output on uh, GP0 also. So let's have GP0 also here. Fast interface, but I'm configuring it uh, slow interface, but the pin values will reflect in both cases. But anyway, let's take the slow interface. Okay, slow interface port zero. Okay, so let's run step by step. So first, okay, he called reset, enable reset. Okay, it became reset, start timer. So you can see only enable became high, reset is gone. Then we are storing this uh, timer value in this variable start time, okay. Uh, it might have got stored. Uh, here in keel, here under colon start plus local variable, you can see your local variables here, okay. Start time is out of scope now because currently the code came to this function. So this is not a local variable of this function. It will come back when you go back to your main function, you will see. Okay, T0, TC, he returned. This is your T0, TC. So this is what I mentioned. He has a value four. Okay, by the time that function executed, it took four clock cycle. Okay, so that's what is going to get stored in uh, start time. Okay, it is actually three in this case. Okay, maybe one clock it took after that also. Okay, so you can see like it keeps on incrementing now onwards because it is enabled. Timer is in free running mode. Now we are in our function. Okay, we finished our function and came back. So you can see timer has substantially increased. Now we are calling this end time equal to get timer value. So that value, whatever was here, uh, gets stored in this end time. And we calculate the execution time, the difference between these two, that is 4E8, these many clock cycles. And GPIO we have seen before, we have set the direction and that value comes here and we are stuck in this while forever. Okay, so this is how we do it uh, programmatically. Uh, ideally, uh, as I mentioned, once you have used your timer, better you reset and stop it. Okay, maybe that's a better idea so that you can reuse it some other time. Otherwise the timer will be keep on running now also when he's in the while loop. So we can again call the uh, reset timer and maybe stop timer. Okay, now if you run, the same output will come. We can run everything in one shot this time. Okay, uh, this is the final answer. So you can see it is in binary 1001110100, which is 1258. Okay, 1258 cycles it took. Okay, let's just note it down somewhere. One, two, five, six. Now if you want the exact time okay you have to multiply it with the clock at which your timer is running now at what frequency the timer is running we are using the default setup that means he is running one by fourth of the processor clock at what frequency processor is running to know that okay uh, that is decided by the code in your startup file okay there he is already configuring your source code and if you want to know currently what is configured, you can go to clocking and power control here. And here you can go to clock source. And currently internal RC oscillator is chosen. And the internal RC oscillator is running at four megahertz. So your timer is basically running at one megahertz. Okay, so you find the PD 
from that and multiply this number uh, you will get the exact execution time that you can do in your program itself okay after getting that displaying it using LEDs might be difficult that's why I'm not doing it if you have some LCD uh, we can do it okay that part we can discuss later if you wish you can change it to main oscillator which is the crystal oscillator and here it is configured as to 12 megahertz now the exact crystal oscillator frequency depends upon the particular board that you are using and what crystal is interface with the processor so that we are supposed to configure when we start our project okay so if you remember when we start our project there was an option to configure the crystal frequency if you forgot to do it again uh, keep target one here go to project and options for target target one under that you will get that option crystal megahertz frequency now it is 12 so that's why he's saying that crystal frequency is 12. if you have a 48 megahertz crystal interface with your chip change it to 48 megahertz now let's try to see the effect of uh, pre-scaling and the source clock selection uh, on this counter value okay so easiest thing may be uh, checking for pre-scaling first so as i mentioned pre-scale what basically does is it will further divide the clock that you have uh, specified here if you are not specifying the register content is zero that means you are dividing with what one okay so let's add an option to configure this pre-scale register again i am just writing it as a function so let's say like okay void uh, pre-scale timer or something and we can pass some value which should be put into the pre-scale register okay pre-scale value and what i will do is okay Our value is passed here. I will put it into the pre-scaled register and our pre-scaled register is this one for timer 0. Pre-scaled register PR. So I will simply say my PR value is uh, this one. Okay, so what we can do is, okay, let me try a pre-scaling. So before starting the timer, I will just configure the pre-scale value. So let's put uh, 1 there. That basically means your clock will be further divided with the 2 pre-scale value plus 1. Okay, let's debug and run again. And now the value is this one, uh, which is like 1. One zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero. In decimal, it is six twenty eight. So if you compare it with what we got last time, you will see like it is exactly half. Okay. So what happened? You already had a frequency here, and in this case you divided that frequency by two. So the clock frequency at which your timer running is half of it. Uh, that means the period has doubled. So uh, if you compare these two, if you find the exact execution time, uh, it will be same in both cases, right? So whatever period you are multiplying uh, this number with became half in this case. So if you make your prescaler to three now, okay, now you are dividing by four that frequency. And you can guess what the output will be in this case. So when I run, this is the output, which is one double zero one 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 zero one zero three fourteen, which is again exactly half of this one. Okay, so this is how pre-scale is working. Similarly, we can try with uh, this one also peripheral clock select. So now we are running at CCLK by 4 but if we configure this register uh, to other value combinations uh, you can either run at cclk if you are using rc oscillator at 4 megahertz itself or half of it 2 megahertz or 1 by 8 of it which is like 500 kilohertz so let's uh, try that option also again i am writing some function so in scale timer p clock so here also i will pass some value 
so the values I will be passing will be the valid ones. So divide by 1, divide by 2, divide by 4, divide by 8. If I am passing any other value, maybe my function will uh, return some error minus 1. That's why I put int there. Okay, so let's write the definition here. So, okay, this case maybe, yeah, how to write the code? All up to you. Maybe I am just using the switch case here. So, well, so if I pass one, that means uh, I want to divide by one. So, I need to make these two bits of PCLK reg zero to one zero. Okay, so so P clock cell, PCLK cell. Again, you can see there are two of them. Timer zero. It is in PCLK zero. So I'm taking that one from there. Okay, and I will say. Uh, we'll have to mask it, so we have discussed it many times. I want to change only those two bits, so I'm masking it with the corresponding mask. So lower one, FF, 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 F3, I will mask, and I can OR with the uh, 4, so that the lower, not lower, uh, in the lower byte, only these two bits, they become 0, 1. So that's why I'm asking with four. So you try the combinations. So if it is one, two, I would say like PCLK is, masking will be with the same mask always because you are always changing the same bits in that register. So in this case, it will be eight. Okay, if we have four, We want uh, those bits to be zero. Yeah, this case, which is the default case. So we don't have to worry with anything. Just give them zero. And if it is eight, we will or with D. And default, okay, say so like if you pass any other value, we will return minus one to indicate not possible. Otherwise, let's return zero to indicate we have successfully configured. Okay, so let's see the effect here. Okay, we need to put a break statement after all of them. Okay, so now let's try this uh, scale timer P clock. That also we need to try before starting it. So let me put scale with one. So I am trying this option. Okay, CCLK. Now we are at this option. We are trying this one. So effectively the frequency uh, should become four times. That means period will become one by four. So the timer value, it should be four times compared to what we got before. Okay, semicolon. Okay, so let's run it. And this is the value that we get, which is binary one double zero one 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 zero one zero zero one, which is one two five seven. Okay. Uh, 1257 which should be like this 314 times 4 yeah you can see like more or less okay and one difference is there okay again you can think like what happens uh, when we make this pd2 high or low what happens to the resolution what happens to the accuracy of our measurements that you should be able to think okay uh, if large frequency is always better we would have always gone with that or if uh, lower frequency is always better, we would have gone with that. Why we need this different option? Okay, you need to give a thought. Uh, basically, you need to think like what happens to the maximum value, how much time we can measure 
as a function of the frequency and also the accuracy of this measurement as a function of the frequency. I will try one more thing, uh, then we can stop whether he is actually measuring the delay or not. Let's try to find out. So currently this for loop is 1000. Let me just try 2000. So ideally I have doubled the loop variable. So the delay should have been doubled. Let's see whether that is the case or not. I'm not touching anything else. Okay, when I run, this is the value, which is, okay, one double zero, one one, one double zero, one zero, one one, two five zero seven. Okay, we got two five zero seven, uh, which is more or less double of this one. You can see uh, half of it is one two five three. Okay, so let me double it once more, then we can stop. Okay, four thousand. So this is the value one uh, double zero one one one. Zero, 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 one, 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 which is 5,007. 5,007, which is approximately double of this. Okay, so everywhere you can see like this seven is coming like an overhead, right? And this value I got when the delay was 1,000, this I got when it was 2,000, when it is 4,000. I got it like that. Okay, so for every thousand, we are actually getting one thousand two hundred and fifty. For this particular frequency, I'm talking. If you change the frequency, of course, that will change. So I can easily predict uh, what value I'll be getting for that particular loop variable. If we use the opposite of that, if we need to create some delay during my program and I want to create some software delay, I can of course now use this for loop to do it. In the previous tutorial, I have shown you how to generate a square wave using this delay, right? Now you will be able to uh, more or less control the PD of that square wave uh, using this information. So if the loop variable is 1000, and if you use the same clock settings, if you are using the internal RC oscillator at 4 megahertz, okay, uh, so for a loop variable of 1000, you will be getting 1250 clock cycle. This you have to multiply uh, with the period at which our timer is running. So you can go and check like, yeah, what our settings we did. Based on that, you will be able to find out the actual time. And using that information, uh, you may modify this function uh, where instead of uh, using a constant here, you can pass the required delay here. And from that, you can calculate the maximum value for the loop variable. And you can create a, a function which can give you the required amount of delay. Okay, that's an advantage, okay? So only this much uh, when the timer is used as a free running timer. The next video you will see how to use it as a free running counter.